Hello everyone and welcome to Cineful Gaming. I hope you're all doing well, I hope you're all staying safe, and most of all, I hope you're all fighting out war against the grey. Today's video, we're going to talk getting started with the Middle Earth strategy battle game, and today we're going to take a look at the Easterlings, one of my favourite factions in the game. Now in this video, we're going to go through talk about the army bonus special rule that the army gets as a faction, and then we'll take a look at a couple of units we recommend to get started with for the faction. We'll then look at some other units we can use to expand upon those first couple of initial purchases, and finally finish off the video with a little sample army list, putting everything we've talked about in the video into practice, a little sample 300 point army list for you to use as some inspiration for starting your own Easterlings army in the Middle Earth strategy battle game. And so, the army bonus for the Eastlings is called No Quarter Was Asked. Eastling models will receive plus one courage when their force is broken. Additionally, once per game in scenarios where a dice is rolled to see whether the game ends, so long as there is at least one Eastling hero alive and on the battlefield, the Eastling player may choose to have the dice re-rolled if the scenario ends before they wish it to. This is pretty cool, the end rule, like just being able to potentially get extra turns in the game to complete what you want to do, or saying, well, I'm happy with this game ending here is pretty cool. Um, and also the plus one courage when your force is broken is really nice as well. Makes it harder for your models to disappear off the table. Now looking at where to begin for the Eastlings, I think Amdor, the Lord of Blades, is the perfect place to start. There is certainly a lot of solid heroes within the Eastling faction, but for me, Amdur, I think, is the best place to start. He's very simplistic in what he does. He is an absolute combat blender and will duel other heroes off the table. He can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the best fighters in Middle-earth at a relatively cheap points cost for himself. He's got fight value with 6, strength 4, defense 6, 3 attacks, 3 wounds, and courage 5, with 3 might, 3 will, and 1 fate point. He's got heavy armor and he carries Dutz, the Silver Fashion, which is an elven made hand and a half sword. He's got Heroic Strike and Heroic Challenge, and he has the option to be mounted on an armored horse if he should want to. He has a bunch of special rules. First of all, Blood and Glory, where if he kills an enemy hero in a fight, he will immediately gain a point of might spent earlier in the battle. The unyielding combat stand makes it really hard for him to get knocked down. The Phalanx special rule, like all models with the Eastlings keyword, a lot of them are going to be able to fight and gain the benefits of being in shield walls, even if they don't have shields. And the Gleaming Horde rule as well is really nice. Uh, just going to allow him to get a plus one defense bonus as well when he's in those nice big formations of Eastlings. Now he's got additional special rules you need to him like Herald of Victory where all Eastling models treat Amdur as a banner and should he kill the enemy leader in combat his range of his banner will increase to 6 inch. He's got the Lord of Blades ability as well where whenever an enemy model in combat with Amdur declares a heroic strike Amdur may immediately declare the same heroic action for free if Amdur has already declared any other kind of heroic action he may change his choice but he does not regain any might points he has expended. So, pretty cool. Like He's straight up a good, solid fighter. He's aiming to get into other enemy heroes, but he also makes other heroes around him and other fighters around him better with that banner ability. Now, of course, to go along with Amdor, we are going to have the Eastling Warriors. Solid unit. Uh, they've got heavy armor, which is really nice. You'll find even your archers do well in combat. I've punched the archers into combat before, and it's quite surprising how annoying defense fires is to get through. Now, they have the option to take banners, and they can be upgraded to Black Dragons, which actually have their own models available from Forge World. Black Dragons have a fight value of 4 and courage of 4, rather than 3 on both those stats, like the basic Eastling Warriors. That Phalanx rule that I was talking about before is Eastling models may use pikes and shields at the same time without penalty. Furthermore, should an Eastling model on foot with a special rule lose a dual roll, up to two other models that have the Phalanx rule may make way instead of one as it's really easy for them to sort of fold into each other and so looking at where we can go after this eastling cataphracts are your standard eastling cavalry heavy armored shield swords and armored horse with the ability to take banners war drums is really cool they're the only unit we have available to us that can take war drums for the extra bit of movement they can also be upgraded to black dragons to get that fight value and courage of four rather than three they have the Phalanx Special Rule and the Gleaming Horde Special Rule, where this model gains the Shield Rule Special Rule, despite being mounted. And even though they're not on foot, then they get a plus one defense bonus is applied to both Rider and the Steed. And here are models with a Special Rule that do not have a Shield will benefit from the Special Rule either way. Now, looking into some of the other units we have available to us, we have the Dragon Cult Acolytes. 
Fight value with four. I'm going to shoot value of four plus as well. Strength three, defense four. Their big thing is what they're equipped with. The Dragon Cult Acolytes are going to have their two dual wielding weapons. So they've got uh, two swords and throwing daggers. And then they've got the Supreme Agility ability on there as well. And the Unyielding Combat Stance on themselves as well. Making it really hard to knock them over. The good little duelist able to take on your opponent's heavy sort of fighters. Now, we then got two characters to talk about. First of all, Rutabi, the General of the Dragon Legion. She's a really cool character. She's got her own cool rules. Uh, she is probably up there, I think, for starting with Amdil, if you like her model better, or she's more available for you. Uh, she is certainly a good replacement for Amdil, coming in at a similar points cost. A little bit cheaper, in fact. Now... She has the show no mercy rule where it strikes against an enemy model that is trapped. She can reroll failed wound rolls. She's got a phalanx. She's got master of battle three plus instead of Amdur's uh, master of blades rule. So she can sort of change up what abilities, but she's requiring to have to roll that three plus. And she has unyielding combat stance as well with a five value of six there as well. Now, Brogir the Conjurer is a spellcaster available to the Eastlings. He's got a bunch of different powers from Blade Wrath, Fury, Eastlings, Enchanted Blades, and Tremor. Heavy Armor and an Eastling Battle Stave, which can be used as a spear or two-handed axe. And the Sorcerer's Adept, where each time he rolls a natural six when making a casting test, he'll regain a point of will spent earlier in the battle. Now, lastly, I want to talk about the Dragon Emperor of Ruin. This model is absolutely amazing. Now, it's got its own unique way of working. So, you've got the Royal Palakorn, where it's carried by six of black dragons, each armed with shield and sword. They do not take any space in a warband, including the Dragon Emperor. Now, this is a mount for the Dragon Emperor of Ruin. However, it does not act like normal cavalry and therefore cannot confer the cavalry keyword to the Dragon Emperor. Instead, it's treated as if it were an infantry model. Now, when the Royal Palakorn has three or more wounds remaining, it moves as normal, reduced to two. It has a movement of three inch. And if it has only a single wound remaining, it can't move at all. Whilst the Royal Palaquin has three or more wounds remaining, it moves. Um, and while the Palaquin is hit by a shooting attack, the shooter must take an in-the-way test to determine whether the Dragon Emperor or the Palaquin is hit. If the Dragon Emperor dismounts from the Royal Palaquin for any reason, or is slain whilst riding the Palaquin, replace the Palaquin with a number of black dragons equal to the number of wounds it has less. Now, it confers a bunch of different rules to the armor, where it can confer banners out, it can give plus one fight value. This does stack with Black Dragon, so it can make some really good fighters. Um, you've also got, you know, other really cool abilities as well. They're just going to add so much to your army. This is a massive force multiplier piece. And so here we have our sample army for you. We have gone with Amdur, the Lord of Blades, to start with for the faction. Now, he's going to be our only hero in the force, and so he's going to be our leader. In his warband, we have three Dragon Cult Acolytes. These are really great at taking out, you know, your opponent's other sort of good troops. So if you're playing, you know, Gondor, like good at taking out, you know, some of their palace guard or taking out Knights of Dol Amroth and all those sort of things, they'll go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them with some cool rules. We then have a bunch of Eastling Cataphracts, four of them, one of them with the War Drum. And then we've got all of them upgraded to Black Dragons as well. We then have a few Eastling Warriors, two of them with bows, and they're not upgraded to Black Dragons. But the other four of them, two with pikes and shields and two with swords and shields, all upgraded to Black Dragons as well for a nice 13 Warriors, but 13 really, really good Warriors led by Amdur, who is a solid fighting hero. There's going to be, you know... A lot of victories in you, like, you might struggle against maybe hordes uh, that are just going to put so many attacks into you, but you've got really, really strong fighters that are going to be hard to take down. If you've been playing with the Eastlings in the Middle Earth Strategy Battle Game, let us know how you've been going and what you would do down in the comments below. And so, that's the end of the video. We hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and drop a comment down below in the comment section letting us know what you enjoyed about the video. If you'd like to chat more with me and other members of our little community here at Sinful Gaming, we have a Discord server which has got a link down in the video's description where you can come chat with me about Wargaming and indeed a ton of other stuff in the Discord as well. Now, if you'd like to help support the channel, the best ways to do so are down in the video's descriptions as well, either by going and joining Patreon or YouTube members, both linked in the video's description, or by grabbing some channel merch, either through our Kofi store or through Teespring. All of these are the best ways to help support the channel. If you'd like to do anything else and help support the channel, please reach out. We're always thankful for anyone who wants to help the channel. 
Thank you to our Patreon and YouTube members. We'd like to give you all a shout out for being such amazing supporters. So thank you to our Patreons, Christian Weir, Soren, Kenny Lyle, Alaron Shot First, Andrew Bowen, Nathan Fee, The Rising Ape, Cure Dynamic, Anthony B, JJ Austrian, Average Wargamer, Domir, Mark Harvey, James Cater, Bloobs, Benjamin Swallows, Red Martin, Kevin Bowman, and Iron Grinch. And to our YouTube members, Green Roots Gaming, Ronya, Locke Lorick, The Johnny 84, David Ellsworth, Wolfric Nick, Broken Chef, Ariana Edwards, Revenar, Pink Nico Fire, Robin Mankiller, Monty's Tabletop, Terrain, John Castle, Davis Weir, and James South. And lastly, a special thanks to Lady Witch Fox Art, who does all the amazing artwork for the channel. Couldn't do what we do without you. Thank you all once again for watching. Stay safe, stay well, and most of all, keep fighting that war against the Grey. Ciao for now.